guys. So hopefully you enjoyed watching 2022's Every Bit Counts Challenge week one yesterday. And today we are diving into the 2023. And I have a feeling we might have achieved a lot more because this video is like 15 minutes longer than 2022's video. So hopefully we got a lot more done. I'm very curious to see, like I said, making notes. But uh, anyways, hopefully we will enjoy this together and I will come up with some great ideas. As you saw in week one of 2022, we were already doing blueberries and harvesting things out of the garden. But as I'd mentioned in that video, tomatoes were behind. We weren't into that season yet. So I'm curious to see what 2023 brought. So let's get started. It's that time of year again. August 1st has come and the Every Bit Counts Challenge has begun. So for those that have not heard of the Every Bit Counts Challenge, definitely take time to take a look at the hashtag for that because it is a fantastic challenge that has been put on by Jessica over at Three Rivers Homestead for quite a few years now. And there is some amazing content and uh, amazing preservation ideas out there. <sighs> I have to say, 2023, you can definitely figure out that we learned that lighting was very important for videoing. <laughs> I have to say what a difference in the video quality from year to year. That's something that we've been striving to improve and hopefully we're getting there. There's always advancements, right? But uh, that is something where I'm definitely seeing from yesterday's video to today's video, night and day when it comes to our cinematography, I guess you could call it. <laughs> definitely preservation is something that goes on in this house all the time year round there is no stopping the canning process because the freezers get full they need to be emptied and that's definitely something that we find this time of year because this is the time of year beginning of august when the garden is just starting to produce but it's not to that point yet that you really get enough to really just go for it and can those items at least not here in our zone in canada uh, but there's certainly a few things that are in the freezer that need to get used up this beginning of August. So we're going to take you on that little ride as you uh, saw in our pantry tour uh, just the other day. That pantry tour that I just mentioned, not going to be sharing that video again. That's old news. I'm hoping or planning to uh, bring you a fantastic pantry tour prior to the Every Bit Counts Challenge starting. I will admit there's parts on the shelf that are getting a bit bare, but as you've seen these last uh, week or two, we have been busy canning away out of the freezer, which I did just mention in here, beginning of August is emptying freezers and I'm doing it already. So it's something that happens year round around here, but we're gonna get back to the video and I will stop interrupting. We have a lot in the pantry still, which is fantastic because that's the basic idea. That's the premise. Keep preserving some of those items so that so that when it comes to this time of year, you still have stuff, even if the garden is not fully producing yet. But one thing for us that has been in production this year is our raspberries. As you can see here, we're harvesting the last real big harvest, I think, for 2023. And we're going to get this made into some jam but it is going to go into the freezer first because we're not quite at a point in the day where I have time to make this jam. And one thing we're finding is these late raspberries are ripe and they do not keep. So in the freezer, they are going in order to be preserved for something a little bit later this week when I have a chance to work on that. Again, something that I'm already doing now, I'm not so sure I will be harvesting them the beginning of August. What are we now? We're the 11th of July and I've already harvested about 46 pounds, probably even a bit more than that, of raspberries. You've seen, we've done some jam. Actually, you haven't seen it yet because it's coming in the video for this week where we uh, can some stuff up. I got something really exciting. I'm not gonna tell you about it here. You'll have to wait for that video because I'm super excited to find it. Anyways, raspberries. Curious to see whether they'll still be around in August as well. But one thing that I did get to this week, actually pre-pantry challenge, for the first time ever, I decided I was going to make blueberry syrup. We had a great deal at the grocery store on blueberries and I couldn't resist, even though I am going blueberry picking this week, um, I got enough to make syrup. And my syrup, as you can see, basically it became jelly. So apparently I'm able to make blueberry jelly, not blueberry syrup. So first time for me, but hey, I think it's still gonna take, taste great. And we got six jars of that to go into the pantry for winter. So that's fantastic. 
uh, but let's show you what we have gotten up to today. Our raspberries that we put in the freezer earlier today. Basically, this is what we do with almost all of our fruit and vegetables. We put it on a tray so it kind of flash freezes and then we bag it up so that it uh, is easy to get out what you need when you need it over the winter. We actually love this method of freezing things. It just makes everything so accessible. We can just put it into these big Ziploc bags and it works out perfect. And you can see here as I'm rocking these up, when we go to grab them out of the bag, I can take one cup, two cups, just a couple. If we're just using smoothies, we only have a few. It works out perfectly. I'm pretty sure we're up to about seven bags of raspberries in the freezer this year. The raspberry patch has been incredible. One thing I will recommend is these little silicone sheets. They're just a little silicone cookie sheet, but they work perfect for this sort of thing because it makes it a lot easier to get them off. It's kind of like putting uh, parchment paper down. But basically, there you go. Super easy. Another bag in the freezer. So at the beginning of August, every year, one thing that we find we are preserving a lot is herbs. The dehydrators are running constantly. And uh, it is the best time because they're really at the peak of the plant. And you know come that dry August weather, they're going to start to brown and shrivel and not be at their best to do the dehydration process. So we've been working on our basil and our oregano. And I'll be honest, so far this year, I have not put too much away for basil. I really would like to fill this jar, even though I do still have a little bit left from last year. I like to do at least one jar a year of things like basil, oregano, that sort of thing. Basil is something that I definitely fell short with in 2023. I still have a little left in my jar, but not very much. And I will admit I completely rationed throughout the year just to make sure we didn't use it all up. So. That's something I've already started tucking away, but you're definitely going to see that coming in August, I think, is some herb uh, preservation for sure. But basil's high on the list. Parsley is another one that we go through. And a huge one this year, now that I found out about the diabetes stuff, is stevia. We have, I want to say there's 12 stevia plants. Haven't actually harvested and dried any of it yet. We're trying to let the plants get a little bigger, but it is time to start taking those tops off. So you're certainly going to see some of that coming up. The basic process is dehydrate it, put it into a bowl, crunch it up. It's funny, with my basil, there's always one that doesn't end up crunchy. Always one. But as you can see, that really didn't go very far. So it's a good thing that the basil plants are looking fantastic still this year and still in production. It uh, always pays to pinch off those ends anyways because that really keeps the plant producing more and more and more, which is what we want if we're going to fill this jar. The next one we have is oregano. This one, I will admit, I cheat a little bit. I don't remove the stems until after. I just find it a lot quicker. Sometimes some of the little stems get in there, but you know what? It's not the end of the world. As you can see, those leaves just fall off the stem so easily after they're dried. I just find it a lot quicker process. Oregano is something that we find now that we don't eat as much pasta as we used to. Uh, we don't go through it as much. And as you can see, I added that to our 2022 oregano. I did a full jar and we basically used half of it. So... I'm gonna just add to it for this year and start a fresh jar next year. So today we're making our choke cherry jelly. And as you can see, we have all of our uh, choke cherries that we harvested the other day. I'll link that video above. The kids and I did a great job. Hopefully we have uh, around the five pound mark because that's about what we need to make the juice for this recipe. Uh, we need three and a half cups of juice. And what we're going to do is put uh, five pounds of cherries and put in uh, three and a half cups of water and uh, let that simmer and then we're going to strain it and see what we get all right so we ended up with actually a little bit over four cups of uh, juice pressed out of these berries so we're going to retain that extra 
three quarters of a cup basically um, and use that after because I actually have some black cherries I need to go out and harvest later on today to make some syrup tomorrow. So we'll just add that juice into that juice. I know it'll be a little bit different, but it'll still work. So now we're going to move on with this recipe. This bit here about the uh, black cherries and stuff reminded me that maybe I better go back to the back and take a look. I haven't even gone back there to have a look at the blackberries and the cherries and see where they're at to know if we're gonna be harvesting those ahead of time or whether they are still kind of in line with that beginning of August. So fingers crossed, I haven't missed anything out there, but I am gonna to have to go take a peek. So this is great that I watched this because it made me think about it. So after doing our taste test on the uh, different ways to make our jelly last year, we have decided we're going to be using powdered pectin because that's the taste that we actually preferred. So this recipe is very simple. One pouch of powdered pectin, three and a half cups of juice, and teaspoon of butter. This just helps to reduce that frothy kind of bubbly texture in the jelly when you go to can it. Don't wanna waste any of that juice. So basically we wanna get this to a boil, then we're going to add four and a half cups of sugar and uh, then get that back to a hard boil for two minutes before we then jar it up. I do love this little funnel when it comes to juice making. It was a gift from a friend, but I tell you, if you can get your hands on something like this, it is wonderful when you're working with small berries. Well, I've got my trusty sidekick helper here and we are jarring up this jelly. And there we have them, they're in the canner, and now we need these to come to a boil, and then you want to can them for five minutes, then let it cool off before you take them out. And there we have the finished product. We ended up with six jars of cherry jelly, or choke cherry jelly, I guess I should say. You can see there, it's set beautifully, it's not tipping or anything. I'm still gonna leave these overnight, just in case. But all in all, very happy with those. I'm back in from doing chores. And the work continues. We are still August 2nd, and at the moment, I'm doing beans. I have a bunch of beans here that I collected from in the garden, and a couple bags that were from the other day. And uh, basically, what we're going to be doing is tomorrow we are canning August stew. So I need 12 cups of beans for that, and then I want to get the rest in the freezer before I continue on with my evening. I separated out my 12 cups into this bowl. This is for our August stew for tomorrow. And this bowl contains all the rest. Now this may be a little bit thick for on here, I don't know. But this would be pretty much all the beans I'm gonna put in the freezer for this year. Uh, there's still a ton on the uh, vines, but we find we use dry beans more than we use green beans. So. Uh, all of the beans that we grow, except for the noodle beans, are all equally as good as dry beans. So that is a definite plus. But now this is on here. We're going to get this into the freezer. Again, I do not blanch or anything my uh, beans. We've been doing this method for a couple years now. I just put them on the sheet. They freeze and I put them in a bag and we just pull out what we need when we need it. Well, today, August 3rd, day three of the Every Bit Counts Challenge, and we have got the big pot out. That's right, we are going to be making our August stew. This is a pressure canning recipe that we all love incredibly. It is a great stew that is packed full of tons of veggies. August stew, so many people have asked me for this recipe or if I'm gonna do a video for this recipe. This year in August, I plan to do it as a solo thing on its own but I knew I'd had it somewhere in a video and here it is. It's in the Every Bit Counts Challenge from 2023. So in case anybody's made it this far and was asking about that, hopefully I go through the whole recipe here. If I don't, I will try and remember to write it down in the description. But August stew, this is a good one. And the nice thing is if your veggies aren't ready yet, you can use those veggies that you tucked into the freezer for uh, all winter and need to clear them out now to make room for that fresh stuff. In fact, I'm using uh, frozen yellow crookneck squash, frozen peas, and uh, canned tomato juice 
in order to make these. There are a few store-bought items in this because my carrots and onions are just not ready in the garden yet, and we haven't really mastered growing enough of those in order to have enough to see us through the whole winter yet. But we are hoping to get there one day. So until then, the main ingredient that has come out of the garden now, besides our herbs, is going to be the beans. This recipe requires 12 cups of green, yellow, noodle beans, whatever kind of beans you happen to have. So basically our full ingredient list, as you can see it laid out here on the counter, we have six onions, which I'm actually going with eight because I'm using a smaller onion, 12 cloves of garlic, which I'm actually going with like 15 or 16 because we love our garlic. You're going to need six cups of squash or zucchini. A summer squash is what it calls for. Uh, six cups of peas. Now you could use shelled peas. I'm using snap peas that I'd frozen from last year. You're going to need 15 carrots, 12 to 15 stalks of celery, the 12 cups of beans, and then tomato juice, as well as lemon juice, salt and pepper, and butter to fry it in before we uh, basically pot all this up. <laughs> so as you can see, this recipe is jam full of wonderful goodness. And this is why we love this recipe for going into pasta sauces or curries. You can strain out the liquid when, when you go to use it if you don't want the excess liquid in what you're making. But we usually just bung it all in, throw in a pasta sauce or a curry sauce and a little bit of meat in there if that's what you want. But it is a vegetarian meal if you choose not to. So just don't use butter, use oil instead. Now, as many of you know from previous videos, I'm all about simplifying. So we're not going to chop all this by hand. That's not my style. We're going to run it through the food processor, get it all chopped up, get it all into the pot, and then we're going to basically cook it up. We're going to fry some of the onions and celery first, then everything else, liquid, basically get this to a boil and jar. It's that easy. There is no long cooking process. You just need to get this to a boil for five minutes and then in the jars it goes. So when it comes to cutting up my herbs, I personally love to use a pizza cutter. Back and forth over this with a pizza cutter and it works fantastic. You get a good size. You can keep working it as much as you prefer or what size you'd like your herbs to be. But basically for this recipe, we need one cup of basil and one cup of parsley. And now with all our herbs in there, we're gonna give this one final stir to work those in. And then we're going to add our juice. Now it actually is supposed to be fresh tomatoes, but we're not into tomato season just yet here. So that's why we're using juice. You can use canned tomatoes, anything like that. Basically it is uh, calling for 24 tomatoes. So that's basically four cans of juice for me. Now, one thing I would suggest is don't add it all at once. I put two liters in here. I'm going to give this a stir. I don't want this to be a soup. We still want it to be a stew. So if it's seeming like it's the right thickness for you, then stop there. One thing for me is I always would rather have a little bit of leftover juice in the canning process in the bottom of the jar than to run out and have to figure something out. So basically that's what we're looking at right there. It's not going to make as many jars as I'd hoped, so I guess we're going to be making this again. But we're going to get this to a boil for five minutes, and then we're going to jar it up. So while we are waiting for our five minutes to be up of this boiling, I'm getting my canner ready. That was two liters in there. You want to put three liters of water in the bottom of your canner. And you always want to make sure you can see daylight through this. This is very important that this is not plugged and that this is screwed on nice and tight. Because that, if it's loose, it won't pop up and lock. And next, I just put a little bit of olive oil on my hand and put it onto my gasket here. Basically, it just helps it seal and prolong the life of this gasket. I've been pressure canning with this now for six years. Still haven't replaced it, and I do a lot of canning. And basically, at that point, I can turn this on and start my water heating. And we're basically two minutes away from starting to can. All right, so the last ingredient to go in this right before you can is your lemon juice. It says to put it in each jar. I just put it right in. So I do three eighths of a cup. Our lids have been heated, ready to go. Nice thing about pressure canning is that you don't need to actually sterilize your jars. They just need to be clean. So we are going to get going. 
So as you can see, we are stacking in the canner today. We have nine jars on the bottom and six on top. So we ended up with 15 and a little half jar for some dinner tonight. But basically, everything's in there. Even when stacking, you still only want to put your three liters of water in. Then we line up our arrows and get that on there. And now we just wait. And basically, you're going to see a big floof of steam come out of here. And once this top here comes up to lock the unit, that means you are pressurized. And then it will be time to put our weight on. So let's see how this goes. Basically, we want to can this at 10 pounds of pressure for 55 minutes. Just like that. And now we wait again. And basically, because we don't stop around here, uh, next, while that pressure canner is getting to its 10 pounds of pressure, and then we're going to be 55 minutes on that, we're going to be roasting some rabbits that we butchered uh, just the other day. Uh, we actually butchered them on the first, uh, first thing in the morning. We like to let our rabbits rest in the fridge for a day or two before we actually cooking, cook them. It just allows the muscles to release. And uh, now we're at that stage where we're going to slow cook these, kind of like a pulled rabbit. Uh, we have a video on that, which I will link above. This is our favorite way to use rabbit because basically it just means that we can put that meat in the freezer and use it however we wish. So our plan is to put out a video every Sunday, uh, basically giving you a rundown of what we did from Saturday through till Friday of the week before. And I had best of intentions today, this is Friday, August 4th, of doing some more canning to put into this video, but it's time to harvest blackberries. They are starting to ripen and we need to get them before the birds do. They're only just starting, but we're going to get some because they may not last long once the birds find out. And we've kind of put a lot of them into sheep pastures and the sheep are slowly eradicating them from areas. So this is an area that fortunately does not get sheep pressure and therefore the blackberries are doing amazing. Well, as is the usual way around here, time has flown by week one, even though it was only four days, really the first to the fourth uh certainly has flown by we've gotten quite a few things done and quite a few things that i didn't even get documented because it has just been a whirlwind but as you saw today enjoyed some great blackberry picking and almost got one and a half buckets before it started to rain and i had to come in and get chores done and get to town but going back tomorrow gonna collect some more because they are amazing right now they are that real plump blackberry because we've had so much rain recently that the the fruit is just amazing so not wanting to waste any of that we're going to collect as much as we can and get that in the freezer so we're gonna flash freeze that and then put it into a bag so it's interesting to watch this and see my comment on the rain and the blackberries being so wonderful after all the rain we just had the tail end of a hurricane come through and we got about four and a half inches of rain in the last day and a half and so maybe, maybe it's going to be a wonderful blackberry season again. One thing that I realized is I was starting to cook dinner and finish off this video and everything else because my mind is going crazy. Um, I had forgotten to finish up with the rabbit meat. I'd put it in the fridge last night because it got late and I was going to bag it up this morning. And as I went to make our chow mein with our freshly sprouted bean sprouts, I realized I forgot about the meat. So I'm gonna take you through that here quickly because I'm bagging that up now for the freezer because that'll make, those three rabbits will make roughly about five, six meals for us, which is fantastic. So as I had mentioned before, basically we do kind of like a slow cook pulled rabbit. And at this point, once it's uh, out of the oven and at this particular moment, it's been in the fridge for the day, I just go and we take off all the meat and then I'm gonna cut it into kind of bite-sized pieces and it'll be bagged up. And it's perfect for things like curry or chow mein as we're about to make here or stir fry. And as you can hear, my cats also know that it goes in cat food because they're like, oh, you got rabbit. Spoiled beasts. 
So before we end this video, we are going to go back and check on those beans that we put into the freezer yesterday. I know they're going to be frozen and ready because they don't take that long. So we're going to get those out of the freezer and bagged up. As you can see here, it basically almost filled a bag. I'm happy with that. If we happen to get a few more to top this up, I will, but I'm not super worried about it. But basically, that's it. We are now 10.30 Friday night, and I'm going to go and have some dinner. <laughs> Definitely 2023 was much busier than 2022 for that first week and only four days. I don't know how it works out this year. I haven't even looked at the calendar, but I did make some notes of the first week from both these videos, things that I want to focus on, things that I should check and make sure that I haven't missed. But in the next coming weeks, we're going to still be doing some canning and things in videos. So you may see some of this type of content even before the Every Bit Counts Challenge for 2024 actually starts. But have no fear. I like to tuck food away. I like to preserve. So we will find something to do every day of 2024's Every Bit Counts Challenge. But for right now and the rest of July, we're going to enjoy the old ones.